Hello everyone, and welcome to All the Magic Spellbound. I'm Toad, and today we are going to be getting most evil. <laughs> and by that I mean we're going to be getting into evil craft. There's also a couple other mods that I would like to get into today. Um... But yeah, I guess to catch us up to speed between episodes, I haven't done too much. I expanded out our mine a little bit, did some resource gathering, and that's about it. I also took care of some stuff that's not necessarily uh, the most fun to do. There was a couple of little chores that I wanted to do. Uh, for example, I took all of these sources from their original locations and moved them here. Yeah, those source receptacle things, uh, source receptacle, these guys right here, they do not last very long. They'll let you transport about five element sources, I believe, maybe six? I think it's five, though. So, um, the first thing you do with the very first, uh, pure gem or pure crystal that you get really should be to get that source receptacle and to move all this stuff over here so you can more easily get another pure crystal um, to use for other stuff. I also built these, uh, what do you call them, ordered sorters. Uh, this is basically like a hopper that feeds things in, feed, feeds items in, uh, in a certain order. So this set is set up right now for swift alloy ingots, which you need quite a few of them. Um, and then this thing here is an instrument output receiver. Now this is actually really interesting. Um, this might be useful for other mods as well, I'm hoping. Uh, I haven't really tested it out just yet, but if this thing works um, with other mods, then this is going to be pretty nice. This is some kind of basic automation uh, without having to be underneath of the thing like a, like a hopper. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just demonstrate how this works. So let's see, it's what gold drenched. So if I put all these items in there in any wacky random order, it will still place one item each in the correct order and it'll create the ingot. And then this output receiver takes it out and places it into this nice looking chest right here. So this, this works out pretty well. Um, Except, you know, <laughs> if you don't have the last item. But, you know, we'll take care of that later. Also, something extremely cool happened. As you can see, this guy, I'm taking him out. Oh, he manages to get me once. He manages to get me twice. But I'm back up. But I'm back up instantly. I come back. I grab my sword. I put it in hand. I make sure that I get a like. I can get a little closer to him without getting too close. He magnetizes me, and I swing. I swing. I miss. I swing. I finally hit him, and then his friend, his stupid friend. Oh, his friend drops it. He drops the fated fragment, the charm fragment, the final fragment, and I'm so happy. I can't, I'm awestruck. I can't even. I can't even move. I can't believe what I'm seeing. That's the last one. The final charm fragment. With trembling hands, I place the fragment into the item frame, completing the set of six. I have all six, and uh, I'm unstoppable. Okay, and now I will create the Foliath charm. After all this time, here it is. Oh boy, fine. That's a. I can finally breathe a sigh of relief, and I can just pop these good. This guy in here. What? What? Doesn't it go in? No, oh, shoot. Maybe not. And it only took. Two hundred and sixty-five Foliaths in order to get that stupid charm. But Toad, you say to me in that insipid voice of yours, I thought we were getting 
evil today. Well, we are going to be getting evil at some point, but I haven't finished explaining what I've done between episodes yet. So, <laughs> maybe there's a bit more than I thought. So the next thing that I did between episodes was I implemented the elemental craft harvester as well as planter. And underneath this mess, there is also a growth shrine. So basically, I'm just going to have to break this here. This harvest shrine and planting shrine upgrade I made like so. And then under this, I think I can dig down here, maybe here, there it is. Under here, I have a growth shrine, as well as this boneless growth upgrade, uh, which is needed for the inferium seeds, since they don't work with bone meal. Uh, also under here, I'm pretty proud. <laughs> I won't lie. I'm pretty proud of this little system that I've developed. So there's the ender hopper there. It's able to be waterlogged. Uh, and this water is, of course, feeding uh, the crops here or wetting them, giving them water. And then above it is the actual ender chest. The ender chest is moving inside Ouch. where it's feeding into this drawer. We've got 54 stacks. It's pretty good. Unfortunately, Inferium, I guess mystical agriculture in general, is gated behind blood magic, uh, which is another mod that I've never done before. I don't know what a growth reagent is. Um, I have this earth crystal, which is good, uh, but I don't know what any of this stuff is. So uh, at some point I'll have to get into that in order to get started with resource production with mystical agriculture. But until then, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I also did a little bit more occultism. <laughs> and this is actually empty now. I guess the Ginny that was in there, the miner, died. Um, you basically create a magic lamp, an ore miner, Ginny, and he just gets you free ores for a while. Uh, he doesn't get you a ton. I mean, he gets you a little bit of gold, a little platinum. It's this, it, this is the whole array of, uh, things that you can get from him, I guess. Uh, no, that's not true. There are some extremely rare things. Um, for example, I believe... You can get unobtainium and... Oh, maybe not. It is 0, 0.0. Same with osmium. Okay, so it may make those ones impossible to get. Maybe you can only get those uh, through mining them. But yeah, this does get... This got me some free emerald, uh, which I've used up already. Got me some free diamond and a few other things. It's just kind of nice to have. I love free. Everybody loves free. I guess since this broom is powered by blood, I made a couple of these syringes and basically we just need to kill a bunch of mobs so I'm gonna piss off uh, a zombie pig man and I'm hoping some of his buddies come and I can kill a bunch of them yeah this will work
Ah, whatever. This, if that legendary guy wouldn't have shown up, we would have been totally fine. Well, anyway, we got our five buckets of blood. Chuck in one of these guys. We got a dark power gem, which is nice. The next step, of course, is to place down some uh, blood buckets. And they will harden into hardened blood, or congealed blood, or hardened, I think it's hardened blood. And then you have to break them, I guess, with a flint and steel. And then we'll be able to, yeah, make our first uh, blood infuser. Okay, after a very long time of waiting, uh, all right, we've got these, which is great. So we've got our hardened blood shards. And now make our uh, infusion core, uh, blood infusion core. Perfect. Cool. And we got a quest. So we then should be able to, okay, it's just cobblestone. Okay, make our first blood infuser. Perfect. This is going to be good. We need this to um, make the power gems a lot easier and a lot more efficiently. And we also need it to uh, fuel up the broom. So we definitely needed this device so now we have the quote-unquote infrastructure <laughs> ready to go and we can start making our first broom so I believe for these brooms we need a cap a rod and a brush we need three separate components uh, they get put together and they start with this bare rod and then you have to basically add uh, you have to add different things to them and then it gives them different modifiers and uh, maneuverability and stuff, different like features, I guess. Um, it's kind of like Tinker's Construct in that respect, but a little different. It turns out we need sticks. We need undead sticks or something. And uh, the only way to get those is uh, the only enemy did saplings and killing saplings and blood shearing. Right, somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we basically just have to trim a dead bush off the ground and then infuse it. And of course, in order to find the desert, we're going to use the classic, classic modded Minecraft item, the Nature's Compass, which when right clicked, we can use to search for deserts around us. And the closest one will show up in the coordinate section. Negative 20? That's not that far away, actually. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think that's down here. That's right here-ish. Here-ish, yeah. Let's call it desert, I think. And let's go. Actually, I changed my mind. Uh, instead, we are going to first get six netherite scrap from the sky. He's a freaking legend. And then we are going to head into the nether and get some more netherite. So we're going to make one of these guys, netherite powder. And we're going to smelt it, turn it into calcinated netherite powder. And then all we need to do is combine this with a uh, mundane potion, which is just made with sugar and I think some other items, but... I always just use sugar because it's cheap. What the heck? What is this doing here? Why level 43? <laughs> um, okay. Guess I'll see if there's any more around. Not one. How strange. Oh. Uh, okay. Keep on going. with that potion, we managed to find about 17 of these ancient debris, which uh, with our guy Vimerion, we'll have about a hundred-ish, um, 
hundred-ish netherite scrap from that, which is awesome. <laughs> we love it. We also managed to find this little statue, or I, I guess we didn't find it. We were award awarded with the statue, uh, which means we've opened a hundred chests, which is kind of cool. A little Minecraft Steve. It's adorable. All right, Marianne, make me rich. All right, now how the heck do I craft this thing? I saw that I needed some special wood. Uh, so I've got the netherite. I guess you need water. Uh, man, man. Is it bro? <laughs> Good joke. I've got the nether. Yeah, so mahogany. I believe there is a little island near me, actually, um, that has a mahogany tree on it. Just I, I've just seen it. It's over here. Uh, it's got these two types of... Not, no, it's not eucalyptus. It's, yeah, mahogany. Yeah, there it is. So we can just run over there really quick. Uh, grab ourselves some mahogany, and we'll be right back to make this thing, or at least try to. So here it is. It's up here. I had to clear out a couple of mobs on the island, but it's... Oh. So it's all the biomes you'll go mahogany, so I don't think it's going to work. Uh, and the recipe, it is pretty specifically... <sighs> pretty specifically... Um, the Hexerai uh, Mahogany, so we're going to actually have to find that. Get out of here, you jerk. Okay, so I did some research on the internet, and apparently the Hexerai Mahogany trees are found in jungles. So I actually searched around my island, but couldn't find anything. So I knew that there was one. It's uh, right on the other side of the ocean, so um, we're able to... I think just run through this jungle and find one. Uh, the website said they're relatively rare in the jungle, so I'm not sure how long it'll take uh, to find one, but I guess we'll bring you back when, uh, when we do find one. Oh, wait, is that one right there? Is that it? That looks different. Yep, that's the one, mahogany. No, yeah, that's not, I guess, yeah, it's not that rare. I mean, it couldn't take that long to find one, but there haven't been a suit there. This is the first one I've found, so maybe they are kind of rare. But anyway, uh, the next step after we get this is we have to go to a swamp biome that I've marked. Uh, we just have to cross this jungle, and it's right on the other side. Very convenient. And we should be able to um, find some mandrake growing, I guess. Because uh, we need that for the broom. And I think that should be it. I think that's all we need. So, yeah. Uh, once we f once we cross the jungle and get there, we'll bring you back again. Okay. <clears throat> so, after a bit of searching through the swamp, I found this big, super laggy structure that I guess is from Hexeray. Um, and it's... it's pretty cool I guess but like I said it's super laggy so I had to cut out a lot of the footage of it uh, but we found these mandrake roots and there's also some you know just some nice things here uh, a lot of this is pretty early access and not really functional um, there's also okay some stuff up here and hello <laughs> um, book of shadows altar yeah I don't like I said I don't think this stuff really does anything it just kind of looks pretty right now so you know maybe someday but the broom does fly so <laughs> I, I made sure of that um, but we're gonna go uh, yeah we're gonna go back and I think we should have everything we need to make the structure or I'm sorry make the broom just need a bucket of water I think for the craft and uh, oh actually no you know what we need we need a bottle of blood so I think I think what I need to do is just pop this bad boy in there and then jump on in. Uh, yeah, a couple times. Okay, cool. And that gives you a little bit of blood, which I think, yep, we can bottle on up, take this guy out, and now we should be ready to make the craft. Uh, just gotta gather all this stuff. Bottle of blood, mandrake root, uh, wheat, two ingots of netherite, and two 
logs of mahogany. And then it spins around and there it is. That's a cool little, I like that animation actually. That's really nice. I see this mod going places. It's it's really nice looking. So, okay, how does this work? Okay, you just place it and... Oh, okay, so it's kind of like a boat. Um, I guess... Oh, okay, space bars go up. Okay, uh, go up here. This is kind of nice. This isn't bad. This is also nice because it's free, right? We don't have to power it. So you can go up. How the heck do you go down? Uh, nope, not that. Uh, huh, that doesn't do anything. What about, uh, oh, oh, it's just control. Okay, well, yeah, that's how you do it. Space bar to go up, control to go down. We're gonna head over to the desert and we're going to pick up one of those dead bushes and boy oh boy, it is going to be a great time. It's going to be a little bit of a bit of a trek though. So strap in. couple thousand blocks later and we're here I'm just gonna real quick jump off of this kill you dummy can't mess with me and grab my shears right here's shear you grab you and we're gonna head right on back so now infuse this with some blood all right, and there we go. We got our undead sapling. Perfect. Little planet. Apparently, it gives you a dead bush back. Okay. I guess that kind of makes sense. Undead. That's funny. Now that we have our undead planks, we should be able to make some sticks, finally. And this should allow us to make bear rod, bear brush, and bear cat. And then we can add stuff to these. We get a bone rod, a wool brush, and then a silver cap. We'll put these bad boys together, and that should get us a fully fledged broom that we just need to put some blood in, and then we can take off and soar through the clouds. Fill it up a little bit more so we can get the full 10 buckets in there. I'd just like to see how much it uses, because I'm, I'm, I am kind of curious. So, all right, I think you just well, right click. Okay. Oh, so this goes in the direction that you're aiming your mouse, uh, your, your cursor. That's cool. Wow, this is way faster. Holy cow. This is so much faster. Whoa, my world can't even load in. It can't even keep up. Holy cow. This thing is crazy. Look at this. Oops. Yeah, this thing is sick. Oh my god, this thing is so much better. Well, let's see how much how much blood did we use just in that in that little bit? I don't think we we couldn't use that much, right? Eh, that's kind of a lot. Eh, I don't know. We just gotta kill a bunch of stuff and always keep our blood reserves full. 
I think we should be all right. So I also wanted to do some building with these uh, rooms because, you know, that's kind of part of the reason why I wanted this. And it looks like I can't pick up items when I'm on the room for some reason. <laughs> I have to dismount, uh, which kind of sucks. And oh, shoot. I also find myself accidentally hitting left shift a lot to dismount, but I think that's just going to be a broom problem in general. Um, but yeah, this thing, you know, I like that this is free, but it's it's a little slow, but it's also a lot more precise. I don't know, it's it, it seems like it's going to serve a different function than the evil craft broom. See, this one, it's like really easy to, you know, kind of go in through here and, you know, it keeps you levitated in one spot. Um... And then you can also ascend and descend with buttons rather than, you know, having to go just forward, up, or down. So, I don't know. They are they both have their, their uses, but I think I think the Evil Craft Broom will be used a lot more for travel. And then this would be used more for maybe building. Um, at least until I get actual flight. Uh, we have our brooms. I think that's going to be about it for me. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you had a good time, and I hope I helped you in your decision of uh, which broom you make, if that's why you came to this video. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, either way, I hope you had a good time. And next video, I'm going to try to build my base up a little bit more. It's a little weak right now. Um, but until then, I'm Toad. Thanks for watching so much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.